Hey there, kickers. Mike here from Kick the Table, keeping you up to date on Kickstarter campaigns in the tabletop games category. And today, we've got a very special video for you. Uh, we're going to be looking at the uh, tabletop games category on Kickstarter in 2018. We're going to do a review of 2018. Um, I've gathered a whole bunch of data and collected a whole bunch of statistics. And I've just got a quick presentation to give to you uh, so you can get a feel for how Kickstarter is doing. And spoiler alert, it's doing pretty well. So before I go on, I just want to talk a little bit about the data. Uh, it's come from a number of different sources, some of which I've collected and some of which I've got from other places. Um, it's only campaigns that are ending in 2018. So that means that there are 116 campaigns that launched at the end of 2018 that I haven't included uh, because those uh, end in 2019 and haven't finished yet. So I don't have the final data for them. Uh, and of course, that means that there are 103 campaigns that launched in the end of 2017 that have been included because they ended in 2018. I wanted to make sure I uh, captured all the ones that ended in 2018. Now, I can't guarantee that I have captured all of the data. Getting data out of Kickstarter can be kind of problematic. Um, buy me a drink sometime and I'll tell you about it. But I think I've got enough data that uh, any differences uh, won't be statistically significant. So let's have a look at the uh, first big statistic, the first big number that we can show for the year. There were 3,133 live uh, Kickstarter campaigns in the tabletop games category that ended in 2018, uh, which is a lot. Uh, and we'll have a look in a minute about how that compares to previous years. But let's break that number down. Uh, of those 3,113, uh, 133 campaigns, 2,113 of them were successful. Uh, so a bit over two thirds. Uh, 645 failed and 372 were cancelled. And there were just three that were suspended during that time. Usually that's due to uh, intellectual property claims or copyright claims and things like that. Uh, there's a few that are hidden for privacy reasons. I don't have any idea what that means and I can't get the data about those projects to even find out. Uh, yep, moving on. Uh, we can see the uh, comparison with over the last couple of years. So the number of campaigns has been steadily growing. Um, it's been going up by about 200 per year for the last couple of years. Uh, and while the number of failed projects dropped this year, uh, more projects were cancelled to compensate. So I guess people are getting better at figuring out when their campaigns are not going to, uh, not going to hit. Uh, and the total number of unsuccessful campaigns remains steady around about 1,000. And that means that of those 200 new campaigns coming in, um, 200 new ones will succeed every year, which means Kickstarter in general is getting better at, um, at producing successful campaigns. But that means if you're producing your own campaign, you've got like a one in three chance that it won't come off. So you need to, uh, you need to do your homework and make sure that you, you know what you're doing. 961 campaigns of that 3,133 have related Board Game Geek pages, at least ones that I could find. Uh, now the linkage information to BGG is all manual. I do that by hand. Um, so there, there have been some that I've missed um, and I've gone back and tried to fill those in after the fact. If I've missed more than that, then I'm sorry. Um, but that's a little over a, a little over 30%. So there's less than a third of campaigns uh, have BGG related pages within the category. And the rest are things like accessories, um, RPGs, conventions. I know a lot of the board game related podcasts um, and other media type outlets, they'll run campaigns in the tabletop games category uh, because that's where their, their audiences are. Here's a breakdown of the, the BGG pages ones. Um, 693 successful campaigns at 72%. Now, interestingly, that's 4.7% uh, higher for uh, campaigns with the BGG page than for just the, just the average. Um, so it looks like you are slightly more successful if you have a related BGG page, but that could also just be that board games themselves, tabletop games themselves, which are more likely to have a BGG page, are more likely to be successful on Kickstarter. 125 failed campaigns and 141 canceled campaigns. So here the percentage of failed projects drops by about 7.6% and the cancellation rate goes up by 2.8%. So before I said that uh, Kickstarter campaign creators are getting better at figuring out uh, when, when their projects need to be canceled because they're not gonna make it, it looks like that maybe the, the people that are in the industry uh, maybe know a little earlier or maybe are a little bit better at picking that. Uh, this is a comparison of um, campaigns from previous years. The uh, count of successful projects with BGG pages took a bit of a dip 
in uh, 2017. It dropped from 651 to 622. Um, but 2008 saw this jump way back up to 693. And it looks like 2019 is going to be the year that we get over a thousand new games uh, appearing on the board, board Game Geek website coming from Kickstarter. The total number of unsuccessful campaigns was 230 back in 2016 and now is 270 uh, in 2018. So that's gone up by about 40. Moving on. Here we can see the number of um, BGG to non-BGG campaigns uh, as it's sort of changed over the years. So in 2016, it was closer to a third of campaigns. Um, these days, that, that number has dropped a little bit. Um, but you can sort of see the, the ratio remains about the same, and the, but the total number of non-BGG campaigns is going up. Uh, so again, that 200 new campaigns that are coming in every year, they're not necessarily board game campaigns. All right, so enough graphs. Let's look at some more big numbers. Uh, there was, if you add up all of the, the goal totals for all of the campaigns that ended in 2018, it comes to 41.6 million US dollars. So that's converting all of the non-US campaigns back over into US dollars at the exchange rate that Kickstarter has um, in their data. So Kickstarter has an exchange rate uh, baked in for each campaign. Um, so <laughs> that's a lot of money. <laughs> Uh, the Kickstarter, the, the people making uh, games on Kickstarter have asked for a lot of money. And in 2017, this was uh, 39.2 million, and in 2016, it was 38.4 million. So we've risen by a little bit. Um, the, the only a third of the games, so only a third of the campaigns have uh, related BGG pages, so 30% is actually less than a third. Uh, but they actually ask for half of the money. So $20 million approximately of the goal total. Uh, comes from campaigns with BGG related pages. So a lot of those other projects, they, they have much lower goals. They ask for a lot less money. But this is the biggest number. This is the amount of US dollars that was actually successful projects took um, in pledges in 2018. Uh, and I checked this number about five times because every time I saw it, I thought it was ridiculous. And it is ridiculous, but it, the number appears to be right. Uh, in 2017, this was down to 122 million, and in 2016, it was 101 million. So this is a rapidly growing um, uh, market. There is a lot of money being made on Kickstarter. Now, remember that uh, Kickstarter themselves take 5% of this, so that's 7.5 million or thereabouts for running the website, and the payment provider normally takes 5% as well, I think, or something like that. Um, but we're still looking at a growth of 27 million in 2018 over the $21 million growth in 2017. So not only is it growing, it's accelerating. Uh, there's more and more money to be made here. And remember that this is just for the entire category. It's not just for um, the BGG related campaigns. But having said that, BGG uh, campaigns with board game geek pages, um, they took the lion's share. So although there's only 30% of the campaigns that have related board game geek pages, they actually took 70% of this revenue at $107 million going to Kickstarter campaigns with the um, with the with related board game geek uh, pages. All right, so let's have a look at some of the big winners for the year. Uh, here's the top five. You've probably seen other other media producers give you this list, but uh, here is my take on it. So number five was uh, in May, Fireball Island from Restoration Games raised $2.8 million with 23,325 backers. In fourth spot, we've got Zombie Side Invader from Cool Mini or Not, or Come On Limited. Uh, they raised $3.3 .3 million also in May with uh, 18,486 backers. In the number three spot, we have Awaken Realms. Uh, with Nemesis, they raised $4.2 million in February with 30,553 backers. The number two spot, Batman Gotham City Chronicles from Monolith, raised $4.4 million in March with 19,303 backers. And this is the only one on this list that I actually backed personally because um, my son is a Batman nut and I can't wait for it. I haven't told him that I backed it. I can't wait for, for it to arrive and to show it to him. And in the number one spot, uh, if you haven't been living under a rock, you would have heard, is going to be Tainted Grail, also from Awakened Realms. They raised $6.3 million in December with 41,939 backers. Now, of that $107 million that I said that um, 
campaigns with Board Game Geek related pages had taken in 2018, these five games by themselves raised $21 million. And Awakened Realms, which had two games in the top five, they took half of that, $10.5 million. It's a lot of money. Let's see a breakdown of them of the uh, of the successful versus unsuccessful projects <clears throat> in each month. Uh, here you can see in blue is the number of successful projects and in red is the number of unsuccessful ones. Looking at this, it looks like April might be the best time of year for you to finish your campaign. It's got a pretty good success rate and a pretty low failure rate. Um, we'll see in a bit that that might have something to do with those, uh, with those big campaigns running on either side in March and in May that might be causing those uh, unsuccesses to be much higher as those big campaigns are uh, taking more and more of the back. It's uh, maybe sucking some of the oxygen out of the room a little bit. October and November have higher uh, counts of successful campaigns, but their failure rate goes up to nearly a third of all projects during these months. So you're um, more likely to fail during that time. Again, whether or not this has any predictive power, if this is just uh, based on what actually happened, well, we'll see. If we just look at the BGG, um, at, uh, at campaigns that have a related Board Game Geek page, uh, we can see that the, the same kind of pattern follows through. Uh, April still looks like a pretty good month. Uh, to be long, to be finishing your Kickstarter campaign. It's worth noting that that's exactly six months distant from the Spiel Fair in Essen, the kind of biggest um, uh, board game release convention that happens in the, uh, in the world. Uh, so people have probably played all the new releases from the previous year and they haven't really started thinking about all the new releases from the new year at this point. Or it could be related to something else entirely. Maybe it's related to uh, the uh, Chinese New Year in February and the information that you're able to get out of, um, out of the manufacturers during the, the preceding months. Who knows? Here we can see the total amount of money collected per month. Uh, it looks like the most amount of money was flying around in March and in May. Uh, remember, though, that two of the top five, Fireball Island and Zombie Side Invader, they both ended in May, which is boosting those numbers quite a bit. Uh, and Batman Gotham City Chronicles also ended in March. That was the number two on the list. Uh, it could, as I said before, it could also explain the failure rates for those months um, being much higher. It's worth seeing that drop around August, September, and October as people gear up for convention season as well. That's, that's very interesting to see. And again, the pledges collected can only be collected if there are projects running. So it, this may be an indication that there's more money at different times of years, but at different times of the year, but it could also just be uh, a representation of the fact that there is less, um, less campaigns running at that time. Which one is causation and which one is just correlation? Who knows? Here's that same data, but now we're only looking at campaigns with, with BGG related pages. Uh, I'll give you a quick rundown. January uh, was mostly propped up by Western Legends, Everdell, and Spirits of the Forest. So most of that revenue comes from those three campaigns. February contains Nemesis, Hate, U-Boot, and Tiny Epic Zombies. March is dominated by Batman Gotham City Chronicles, but also in there is Dice Throne Season 2, Edge of Darkness, and Aeon's End Legacy. April, the only big competitor there is uh, Dinosaur Island. And while May gathered the most pledges, uh, other campaigns in May had to contend with some serious giants. Uh, I mentioned before, Zombie Side Invader, Fireball Island, but also Street Fighter the Miniatures game and Hellboy the board game uh, finished in May as well. In June, we had Mythic Battles Pantheon and a second printing of Heroes of Land, Air and Sea. July contained the, uh, the Binding of Isaac, Four Souls, uh, Cthulhu, Death May Die, Solomon Kane, and the reprint of Eclipse. Things quietened down in August with the big, 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 the big campaigns being Thunderstone Quest expansion and reprint and the escape plan um, being the top earners. In September, you, you see that bump is most likely unstable unicorns, control and chaos, and, uh, but also in there is Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, October was very quiet, but the biggest release in October was Tiny Epic Mechs, the latest game in the Tiny Epic series. November sees a bit of a boost thanks to the Edge Dawnfall, uh, Reich Busters, a second printing of Deep Madness, an expansion for Spirit Island and Tidal Blades, all of those doing very well. And of course, December is dominated by Tainted Grail, but also in there is Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice, which uh, earned over a million dollars as well. Now, if we actually take those, uh, 
those uh, outliers out, uh, we can see the, uh, a very similar looking graph, um, but you can see the, the effect that some of those outliers had. So here, an outlier, uh, which are the, the parts of the bar that are in red, is any campaign that has more than 6,000 backers. And I did some interquartile analysis to figure out the, the 6,000 backer line. Um, so you can see there that, that, that March and May or, and even February, although they had a lot of uh, revenue, a lot of that revenue came from a couple of very small, um, or a small number of very large campaigns. Um, so you can see there that April is still a pretty good month. It still looks pretty strong. Um, but June and November is beating it out in terms of revenue share for those smaller campaigns. So that's something else to keep in mind. Speaking of, um, this is a view into how many backers most projects are going to get. Uh, successful campaign, this is just successful campaigns with uh, related Board Game Geek pages. It also doesn't include those 47 projects, which I consider to be major outliers, those ones that gathered more than 6,000 backers. And statistically, anything above 3,800 backers is, is also considered to be a minor outlier from a quartile analysis um, kind of thing. If you remove that, those outliers, then the median number of backers drops from 694 to 522. So uh, the median number of backers that you can expect is about 500, uh, somewhere between 500 and 550. Um, but you can see here that, that most campaigns still, by a long shot, are going to get um, less than 500 backers. If we did the same thing with revenue, this is uh, showing the amount pledged into successful campaigns that have related board game geek pages. And here I've excluded the, there's 86 projects that made over 240,000. Those are, again, using uh, interquartile analysis, they're the statistical outliers. Um, so you can see that most campaigns are going to make sort of 10 to 20,000. Uh, in fact, if you uh, if you remove the outliers, then the, the median amount pledged drops from about 30,000. Uh, to about 24,000. So the, the median amount you can expect out of a Kickstarter project is going to be 24,000. So I do have some audience submitted questions because I put out a call uh, asking people for those. Uh, but before I get to them, I want to ask you for a bit of a favor. So in 2018, I paid $330 out of my own pocket to uh, run Kick the Table. Uh, that's keeping the website running and, uh, and also the collection of the data. It doesn't cover any of the hours I spend every week putting together blog posts and keeping you up to date on Kickstarter campaigns in the tabletop games category. So if you use the website or if you read my weekly blog post, please consider supporting me over at patreon.com slash kick the table. Uh, each week, my blog posts get around 100 thumbs. And for my five year anniversary post a few weeks back, uh, I got 230 thumbs. And if every one of my, uh, if every one of my readers, if everybody in my audience pledged just a dollar a month, that's just, just $12 a year. Uh, that would more than cover the costs of running the website. So again, you can, you can support me over at patreon.com slash kick the table, or if you just want to go check out kickthetable.com, there's a support link up in the menu as well. Uh, yeah, that would be awesome. Thank you. All right, so onto the audience questions. I did, like I said, I put out a call for audience questions and I only got one person to respond. Uh, Jan Bertrand from BGG uh, asked a whole slew of questions and a whole bunch of people thumbed that, that comment as well. So presumably a lot of people want to know the answers to these questions. So I have a bunch of questions to answer for you, Jan. I uh, haven't got to all of them, but here's what I do have. Okay, is there a trend in the number of Kickstarter projects to increase year over year? Yes, there is. Yeah, uh, we went back and had a look at the at the data, and the total goes up by about 200 every year, and it appears to have been doing that for the last three or four years fairly steadily. It's worth noting that the percentage of successful campaigns goes up as well, with the unsuccessful count hovering, as I said before, around about a thousand. And if that trend continues, we can expect to see 300 and uh, 3,300 to 3,400 campaigns showing up on Kickstarter in 2019. That's a ridiculous amount of games. Nobody can cover all of them. I will try and do my best. How much money do Kickstarters that actually fund make? Well, we saw in the previous thing uh, that most campaigns in the tabletop games category with related board game geek pages, they make less than 10,000, but there's a median of about 24,000. So somewhere in that range is, is probably what you're looking at if you are uh, running a successful campaign. Obviously, I'm assuming that most people aren't going to be Awaken Realms and Come On and, and those and Mantis and those people that run those really big campaigns that make a whole ton of money. Most campaigns make a smaller amount of money. 
what is the min, max, and typical duration of a Kickstarter campaign? So I thought this one would be obvious. I thought I just off the top of my head, I thought 30 days was was the answer. Um, but I will. I, I did some analysis of the data, and, and here's what I came up with. So the shortest campaign that was successful in 2018 was Adorable Monsters by a guy by the name of Joshua Mason. It earned $1,200 and had a $100 goal, and it did it in just six days. Uh, and I think that it had something like 11 backers. So it was a very small campaign, um, but it managed to make a ton of money. So there you go. Uh, the longest campaign was uh, one called Taylock Mayan, uh, Mayan uh, which earned nearly uh, $4,600 of its $1,000 goal over a 60-day period, and that's pretty rare. And then when I looked into what most campaigns do, it turns out that 27% of successful Kickstarter campaigns run for 30 days. Um, and that's not a big surprise. I, I don't know if that's even maybe the default when you create a new Kickstarter campaign. I've never created a Kickstarter campaign. If you have, maybe chime in in the comments. Uh, but beyond that, 7% of them run for uh, 21 days or three weeks, and 7% run for 28 days or four weeks. Um, so that's what 14 plus 27 is 41%. So that's most campaigns are going to run for between three and four weeks and up to 30 days. Uh, that seems to be the, the average that most people do. Uh, the same question, but now for goals. Um, so the successful campaign with the lowest goal in 2018 was one called Warigin, or uh, War, W-A-R-I-G-I-N. It asked for just a single euro, uh, but it made just over 13,500 euros uh, from its 325 backers. Uh, the successful campaign with the highest goal in 2018 was the one that I backed, Batman Gotham City Chronicles. It needed a whopping 500,000 US dollars in order to fund. So in order to exist, I don't know if that's modeling costs, if that's just pure licensing costs to get the, the Batman thing. I know that uh, the game was a Kickstarter exclusive, um, so they weren't able to recoup any money from uh, retail sales after the fact. But... It managed to reach $4.4 million with the help of 19,303 backers, of which, like I said, I was one. About 7% of campaigns are looking for a $10,000 goal, and about 4.5% of campaigns are looking for a $20,000 goal. And those are just big round numbers that people pick. Uh, about 4.5% uh, will also split the difference and look for 15 k uh, So it seems like that's, that's about what people are looking for. The median goal is uh, 10,000 and the mean is 21,000. Um, so the, the most people are looking for 10K or under, or the average is, is sort of 10K. Uh, but if you average up all the large ones as well, you, it goes all the way up to 21K. Um, but if you drop out those statistical outliers, then the, the, uh, the mean drops all the way down to 12,500. So around about 10,000 is what people are looking for. And that's... Uh, that's consistent with, with what the successful ones are actually getting. What is the min, max, and typical back account of a Kickstarter campaign? Well, the, the successful campaign with the lowest number of backers in 2018 was a, a Royal Green expansion pack for a, cam, for a game called Electromagnet. Um, it was looking for just $100, and eight backers took them to $154, which made it a successful campaign. Uh, let me know if you're one of those eight backers. I'd be interested to hear. The successful campaign with the highest number of backers in 2018 was, of course, Tainted Grail. Uh, 41,939 backers raised $6.2 million for this one. The median number of backers you can expect for a successful campaign is a little under 700. And if you drop the outliers from the data, which, as I said before, is any campaign with more than 6,000 backers, that median falls to 522. So you can expect around 520, 530 sort of backers uh, for your campaign if it's going to be a successful one. And that's the last of the questions. That is all I have. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please check out kickthetable.com. Uh, go check out the blog post and hit subscribe on Board Game Geek, and I'll keep you up to date with Kickstarter campaigns happening in the tabletop games category. Uh, please consider supporting my Patreon by going to patreon.com slash kickthetable or to kickthetable.com and hit that support button. And let's have an awesome 2019.